So guys, this is going to be the final chapter in this course. So, first of all, we want to congratulate you for reaching this point of the course. And as a reward, we're going to keep this chapter very simple. We're just going to revise some of the important words in the course. Of course, we previously mentioned them, but we want to make sure that you fully understand what they mean, because they are actually very important words. So let's take a look at the words we have. Number one, keywords. One of the most basic words in SEO. Yeah, and that's probably the first word that you learned. So in English, it means a word of great significance. Similarly, in SEO, it's also a word of very high importance because it highlights your post and make it easy to find. So keywords are the words or phrases in your content that makes it easy for people to find your content using search engines. And the next word we have is backlinks. We have had a full chapter on that, but just to quickly revise, backlinks are any links that are connected to or from your website. We have outreach links, and these are the links you can include in your content to redirect people to other websites. And then we have organic links, and these happen when you get visitors from other websites because they mention the link of your website. And we said that our suggestion here is to link only to high quality websites. Now the next thing we have is on-page optimization. Well, this means to optimize each page of your website individually in order to rank higher. So basically you can modify the content and the HTML code of the page, of each page actually. On the other hand, we have off-page optimization. It is the total opposite of the on-page one. Because here you're not focusing on the content nor the code, you're just focusing on the techniques that you could use in order to get higher rankings, such as including backlinks in your website or getting referrals or even social networking. So as we can see, it's the methods of optimizing your website, but not the code and definitely not the content. And then we have the SERP or the SERP, which stands for the search engine results page. So as we said, it's an abbreviation for this sentence, search engine results page, and its name says its meaning. It basically means the result page that you get when you search for something in the search results, just as we can see here, we have here an example of Google searching. And as we can see, that's the search engine results page. The next thing we have is an influencer. So basically an influencer is a person who is popular or famous. You basically hire him so he can talk about your website and encourage people to interact with it, eventually to get more visitors. And he or she mainly does that using social media. And a lot of people tend to use influencers as a strategy in SEO to get natural organic visits. And then we have anchor text. Well, the anchor text is the piece of text that actually contains a link. So it becomes clickable. It appears as a part of the content very normally, but when you roll your mouse over it, you can actually click it. So you can get redirected to another page or even another website. And then we have a bot or a spider. So these are also known as the crawlers of your page. These are the bots that visit your websites and analyze its content piece by piece to actually index your website in a specific ranking in the search results. Of course, all of this is going to be based on your content's performance and other aspects. And so we have URL. Well, URL is an abbreviation for Uniform Resource Locator, and it basically means a link. In SEO, the URL is the actual link that redirects you from page or website to another. So what's hidden under the anchor text that we just mentioned, that is the URL of the page that you are visiting. A domain, well, a domain is the name of your website. It's what's written between the www dot and also between the dot com. So it's the actual name of your website. So in SEO, it's always highly recommended to pick a catchy and interesting one so people can be interested in clicking on your website when they see it. And then we have a semantic site. Well, a semantic site is basically a website that uses in its code in its code, the HTML5 for optimization of the design itself of each page. 
And people use that language and make their website semantic because when the pages are organized and split into different sections, this can be a good visual cue for the crawlers when they're crawling your website. And also we have a responsive site. Well, a responsive site, it's actually a website that can be viewed on any screen, no matter what size it is. And it is actually adaptive. You are, yeah, by that we mean that it actually adapts depending on what kind of platform or device you are using. SEO people tend to use it because it makes their website viewable on mobile phones, which is very important, and basically every screen. So guys, that was the revision. We hope you have found it useful. And that's going to be the end of this course. Congratulations on completing it. We truly hope that now you have a better understanding of SEO and we hope to meet you in the next courses. Thanks and goodbye.